There was a recent article published in VentureBeat uh, belying the conditions, well, rather belying the complaining about the conditions of the gaming industry. This was written by Alex St. John. He is a game industry veteran who has worked with Wild Tangent, uh, co-created DirectX from Microsoft, and has had his hands in a lot of really influential software used uh, by the industry to this day. And in it, he made a few assertions. If you want to read the full uh, article yourself, uh, go ahead and do it. It is not a easy read, for me at least. No. Um, there are some assertions made in there about people complaining in the industry about fair wages and wanting to have a normal uh, work week, to which he calls, they want to pretend that they can turn an inherently entrepreneurial endeavor like game development into a nine to five job. Many modern video game developers have embraced a culture of victimology and a bad attitude toward their chosen vocations. They complain that the long hours and personal sacrifices great games require are a consequence of poor management. Somehow these people have managed to adopt a wage slave attitude toward one of the most remarkable and privileged careers in the world. Well, he kind of belies the work of uh, creating software in general, saying all you're doing is pushing a mouse. To which I say that is extremely oh. unfortunate, especially for someone so involved with the industry. Yeah, and it's interesting because he has actually received a lot of pushback uh, from many developers and creators over uh, his comments. Mm -hmm. uh, he's upset quite a few of the status quo over this, and uh, I reached out to a lot of my game dev friends uh, before heading into today to just kind of, you know, see what they thought about of it, uh, about this. And, you know, the overwhelming response was, you know, yes, there is a huge issue with the crunch time, and, and it, it is something that they wish that, um, the major companies would address because, you know, everyone accepts the fact that, yes, when it comes down to those last couple of weeks when you're about to ship that game, it is going to be It's hell. going to be hell for it's everyone. Yeah, for everyone. And, and, it's, and it's, it's accepted. But when I found out that sometimes they're doing free overtime and not getting paid, that's, that's a little crazy to me because I, I'm like, whoa, guys, like I understand like, you know, hard crunch, but like, not getting paid for your work, and it's not a passion project, and you're working on a triple A game, that's an issue. Well, the structural crunch, I think, yeah. is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a horrible attitude to adopt as a working model, and also a way that destroys someone's dream job, essentially, yeah. which is to create something amazing. I, we, we also have the idea that uh, this is an entrepreneurial, mm -hmm. artistic venture, and you should be treating it like that. But I want to point out that the def that if you're an employee of an yeah. entrepreneur, you're not an entrepreneur. The one who is the uh, the one who's the paying, owner running the checks, the entrepreneur. they are the ones who assume the risk. When yeah. you're an employee, you ultimately are a person yeah. who has uh, wages, a nine to five job, normal expectations of what their life should be. And also, when we get to the point of pushing them, all you're doing is pushing around a mouse. Mm -hmm. Put the physical act of pushing a mouse is the easiest part of this, but all of the work you do, all of the ideas, all of the different things that take a lot of steps to come up with, to implement, mm -hmm. that is hard work. To, to describe it that way belittles, I think, anyone who works in an industry that involves uh, writing or Any, e creating yeah, anything, exactly. designing anything. I mean, that's, and it's, and it's, it's, I mean, no different from my time in the, in the hard news industry. I mean, listen, when you push yourself past these limits, any normal human limit, you you lose out on relationships. You could, you know, I uh, I was reading this great article by Eric Frieden about a Scandinavian uh, developers, and you know, they reference about how one guy almost lost his marriage, and that's not the first one. I, I have it's, it's very yeah, I have several industry, friends though. who have, have broken up over, uh, you know, their their time in the game industry. Um, I, you know, you you lose your sense of self. Um, you you have health issues. A lot of a lot of my dev friends have um, developed severe carpal tunnel because of the crunch times. You know, it's and and what I was hearing is the burnout. People are burning out at 35. You're not having these like big long stay devs anymore because they're just not around. So think about that. That's another huge issue we're seeing in this industry is that we don't have. We don't have the Ken Levines like we do anymore. They're all burning out at such a young age because they're being pushed past their limitations. Mm -hmm. And that is an issue that people need to address. Now, now look at it on like a, on a smaller scale because, you know, in this article he, he says, oh, well, if you're really about passion projects, just go do your own. Go do your own indie project. Well, you will. And, yes, you're going to put yourself through crunch time. You're going to put yourself through hell. But that's a little different when it's your own personal project that you want to see through. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you're working for a huge corporate 
Uh, when you're getting paid a salary. Yeah. I'm working for, like, I'm given, what is it, you're, you're allotted a 30-minute break to 15-minute breaks in your eight-hour day, anything after eight hours. Hell, even, even on a production, think about here in Hollywood, you know, we have unions for a reason. Maybe it's time that there's a video game developer union. I think that should be the case because yeah. we're getting to the point where it's ruining a dream job or ruining mm -hmm. the culmination of uh, years yeah. of work, of learning to code, of putting your hands in many different places so that you are, well, that sounds yeah. dirty, uh, <laughs> but many different fields so that you learn uh, how to put it together a game, which is itself, and I agree with him here, a magnificent, crazy great mm -hmm. thing. And it, it should be kept that way. When you burn out your employees like that, when you treat them as less than human, you're going to see suffering as a result. And us as gamers are suffering as well because look at how many games are being shipped with massive bugs being com like incomplete. Like I don't want to buy a, a game anymore that like, oh, I'm going to wait for an update because it has so many freaking failures. As you'll recall, uh, one of our favorite games mm -hmm. of all time, Mass Effect, Fact, yep. Mass Effect 3 suffered from this, which it should have been... I mean, if it, if it followed the first half of the game, yeah. it would have been beautiful. Exactly. It would have been so satisfying. But we had to wait until they eventually uh, released an update yeah. that amended what they had, had were forced to put out on the ship date. I would rather have a game be delayed, and I would rather have the team work on a game that they are proud of and happy than to force a ship date. Because... I'm going to get a better product as a consumer, and they're going to get a better product all around. I mean, look, I equate this to the nursing industry, and that's uh, in, in the, the Polygon article by Frieden. He does this as well. You know, their nurses, when they work past overtime, will, will, after 40 hours, will start to have failures in their jobs. They will poke people too hard. They will screw up medication. They will endanger themselves and the lives of their patients. Obviously, video games are not a life and death situation, but anyone pushed past their limits is going to make mistakes. We're seeing this in the video game industry as a whole, so I think it's time that we address this and make a change for the people out there creating these amazing products that we love and for those of us spending millions of dollars each year on these games. All right, well, very well put. When developers suffer, I think anyone connected mm -hmm. to the industry suffers. Audience, do you think that uh, creating games is tantamount to creating art or does it need to be treated like any other creative industry? Let us know what you think below in the comments and please like and subscribe for more.